Uh, so hello everyone, this is chapter 13. Um, yeah, it's a very small chapter that uh, it should motivate us to um, learn more about reactivity. Uh, There's a couple of chapters that uh, will dive deeper into the reactivity is uh, 14 and 15. And I think, yeah, even 16. So this, this uh, are the three chap main chapter but we'll dive deeper into the concepts, uh, the shiny, how shiny implement reactivity. And yeah, so in this chapter, we will just give the motivation for it, uh, why we need it and why shiny come, come up with it. Um, and some of the history about reactive programming and other stuff. So yeah, our learning objective, we, we want to improve our intuitive understanding based on applying reactivity. So this mental model, we want to build this kind of idea how reactivity uh, is being built and why it's useful. Um, so what is reactivity or reactive programming and why it is used in Shine? Okay, let's begin now. So yeah, Shiny is a good magic. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of uh, like similarity between um, what uh, what other frameworks are doing in which is is like a magic again, but um, the similarity between it and between Shiny will address address that in uh, very soon. But yeah, that's why we think of it as a magic because it just works um, as we expected. And it has this intuitive uh, meaning where we, if I change some stuff, some other stuff that depend on the first stuff is changing. So it's, yeah, it's intuitive. Like we were uh, like, uh, like a domino effect and, um, or like something like, uh, like a needle uh, or a string that, really attached to each other. So if you pull the string, it will, it will become more and more um, uh, like you, you, are, you are like ruling it. And uh, as long as you are pulling it, uh, you, you still have this kind of uh, this input force and, and force it out and uh, you get the whole more, the more string that depend on the pulling stress. So yeah, a lot of examples that really uh, simulate this kind of uh, dependency mindset. Um, so yeah, so Shiny is is a good magic. Um, if you check the layers of reactive programming, you won't find a pile of heuristics or special cases and hacks. The magics come from simple concepts combined in consistent ways. Um, so yeah, the, the magic comes from simplicity. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, the, the more simple that uh, any any programming concept or any framework, if it if he, if the builder of the framework have have it like um, have this kind of mental model and he he communicates this mental model to the audience of this framework or the the people that will use this framework, it is already done magic by that by doing that. Um, some so, so the more the simple to use, the more you will uh, people will use it. Uh, because it's simple. Um, so yeah, this is where it comes from. Um, okay. Um, so what is reactive programming? It's a paradigm which focuses on values that changes over time and calculation and action that depend on those values. So as I said before, it's, a, it's like a domino effect. This is, this is a, good, a good picture. Um, if you like, like um, drop one piece, it will go and affect every other piece that depend on this uh, piece. So yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like a ladder or um, a dependency system uh, where, where pieces are depending on other pieces. And as it's, it's just simple, uh, it, it is concerned with data streams, sequence of data elements, and the propagation of changes, the propagation that simulated here in as the domino uh, 
like uh, how how every piece are affecting each other. Uh, this propagation is what called uh, the data streams, uh, and yeah, it's just affecting uh, simply as is our mind. We have a neural network uh, in our mind, mind, and uh, every piece of or every uh, uh, every neural are connected with each neural other neural. So that's why our mind is. Um, we tend to uh, uh, remember stuff that related to other stuff. Um, so this relatability or dependency helping us learn as actually. Um, so yeah, it's very good mental model to work on and to implement that in programming, it's another, it's, it's another way, it's another story. Um, so yeah, this is that's interactive programming in simple uh, bullet points. Now, why reactive programming in Chinese? So we have a problem. We want to keep sync uh, the input and outputs. We want to, this kind of uh, simplicity and at the same time the dependency. And we talked about this as a, excuse me, uh, we talked about uh, um, the reactive graph and we will talk more about it in chapter 14. But this reactive graph, we have the first, in, the first graph uh, or first uh, nodes is inputs and the last node is outputs. So connecting between them uh, is what is 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 what we uh, is our objective uh, from using reactivity in Chinese, and um, but we need to minimize com the computation. So a way to sync input and outputs, and at the same time minimizing computation. Don't reuse or don't com uh, compute what you already computed before, or you already you already processed before. Because we we live in in a sim you know in a world of uh, computation, where simple problems have simple computation, but the more complex you get, the more you will need compute compute power, and that's will create a really heavy uh, stress on the compute compute power or the processors uh, for us to compute stuff. So the more you minimize, the more you optimize the the the, the application and the, how it's uh, the smoothness of it and the, the speed and a, a lot of stuff. It's it's affecting a lot of stuff if you minimize the computation. So the solution is outputs and reactive expressions change if and only if their inputs change. So we create this dependency graph uh, where. The input, if it's input change, the output change, and that's it. Um, don't just the the linking part is only is the, is the only part that changes. Every every time everything else is still the same. So we'll talk about caching and other stuff uh, sooner. But yeah, let's go to the next next slide. Uh, okay, so. Oh. Okay. Okay. So why why can't you use variables? So variables. Oh yeah. We we're now going into the world of why we are why reactivity is built in the first place. Why we need reactivity. We could use variables. We could use functions. We could use something called event-driven programming. So why specifically the re uh, we use reactivity or why we, we come up with reactivity as first place? So this is a simulation of we try the uh, the other solutions that we talk, that, that I talked about now. Uh, and we see why this is, where is the limitation is, or why this is limited. So first one is variables so why we can't use variables variables don't update automatically when a period of values change so there is no dependency between the variable and the values uh in in r and um if you for example in this example if you get if you have this kind of uh we want to put, uh, to transfer the temperature from celsius to fahrenheit um we, we 
the temp C is a silicious and temp F is a Fahrenheit. And this is the equation for the transparent between the both. Uh, and yeah, if you if you get 10, now temp, uh, the, the Fahrenheit is 50. If you get my, if you get 30 Fahrenheit, it doesn't change because we didn't re reassign the temp F again. So it still has the value 50. So it doesn't change automatically. Now, this is a feature in, in R, but um, some other programming languages have um, like have this mutability and mutable and immutable um, data, uh, uh, data types. Uh, but yeah, in R, it, it's slightly different. Uh, so yeah, variable don't have this kind of automatic updating for values when the dependency changes. Uh, so yeah, this is a mutation for it. So that's that's that. And now we go into functions. So why we we don't use function instead of reactive reactivity? Um, so the address the issue of automatic updating, but require excessive computing, computation. So automatic updating is done when we call the function, okay, now in this example, for example, uh, we have a function to, that we uh, implement in it, how we transfer from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Uh, to call this function more and more, the, the more we call it, the more we, uh, yeah, so every time we call it, we recompute every other step in the uh, in the function. Um, so there is no way around that. For every time we uh, we want to calculate temp C or temp F, sorry, uh, we will need to call this uh, function over and over again. So when we change the temp C, uh, we need to call temp F. And for every call, this is, yeah, this is automatically updating F, but for every call, we are computing all over again, um, the whole function body all over again. So this will, will be not very obvious for this simple problem, but with the more complex you get, the more computation you will consume. Um, so yeah, but does unnecessarily computation. So recompute every time it's, it's called. Yeah, that's um, and you could we could like uh, try that in here. Could give the vtmc vtmf and converting it. Then when we change and call it again, it will change the value of tmf again. So yeah, it's 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 just solve the part of the problem, but not uh, the excessive computation problem, uh, or don't repeat yourself uh, motto, I would say. So yeah, let's move to the next way of solutions. Uh, which is it like event driven programming? So yeah, this is an old way of doing programming based on callbacks. So this method callback callback function that run in response to events. We have a click event. We have a run, like running a function to process an order. We could have like a slider event. Like if you if you change a text, if you change uh, if you slide the button, if you press the button, or anything like um, uh, called as an event. Um, we could re write call to response to it. Respond to it. Now this uh, this is the and yeah this is an R, an R package like it's a way of implementing an object orientation in R, which is R six. So we use R six package to implement the class uh, the classes uh, in R. So yeah, this is an example of using this R R six classes uh, to uh, try to implement or um, Make you make an intuition of how we could use or how we could build this dynamic value class uh, to simulate something like um, reactivity. So we have a class 
let's say as a code, uh, no, so we have a class called the dynamic value. We have a value on is null and on update is null. And we have a couple of functions. Uh, the get function to get value, set function to setting a value, and on update to respond to an event based on the value that we have in the class or, or in the object after we created the class itself. Um, I know this is, uh, this uh, this way of thinking of reactive or uh, sorry uh, object orientation is different than we have S3 and S4 and R6 in R, but um, the R6 part is uh, is the most um, common or not common. It's like uh, it's attached a lot. Uh, it's like it's like trying to simulate other programming languages in R. So it, the most like uh, Java or C++ or any any type of object-oriented programming language uh, out there, uh, they use the same kind of way of defining classes. So this is a way of, uh, um, yeah, it's a, it's a way of uh, implementing that, that in R. Uh, we have R7 now and the, uh, a lot of stuff are happening in uh, this kind of object, uh, implementing object orientation in R6, but that's not, the topic that we want to focus on. So now um, we have this kind of big chunk of code that uh, define the dynamic value class. Let's try it out. And okay, now just copy and paste that. Now we have this kind of called dynamic value. Let's go into uh, the next one. So yeah, it solves the problem of unnecessary computation since everything, um, everything that we, we just creating a stuff that we compute as we call it. So as we call it, we it's compute. So we're creating a dependencies and we, as, as we call it, it will compute. Um, for this example, we have here, we defining an object, a new object of dynamic value. So TMC now is, an, uh, is a dynamic value object, uh, just that implements the dynamic value class. Um, and we now call on, uh, on update. So if TMC updates, uh, just uh, calculate the TMF. Uh, when that happened, and we pass a fun passing in a function uh, with uh, with our uh, logic. Here is converting from uh, uh, Celsius to, to to Fahrenheit. So if we set using the set function in TMC, since it's uh, an object from dynamic value, it have now set and get and uh, on update. We use on update now uh, here. And now we're using set. So we're setting the value of TMC uh, to be 10. And if we go back to the TMF, now it will be uh, changed to 50. Uh, if we set again the, temp, uh, the object TMC to, to be set minus 3, TMF will change uh, accordingly. So yeah, now this actually solves the problem of unnecessary computation, but it makes hard to track which input affects which computation. So in Shiny, we have this kind of, okay, this, um, this input are um, like, it, 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 this output is depend on this input. We have a graph. We seeing the link, lineage graph. So we seeing the linking between the uh, both parts and how this is computed in the memory. Uh, but here, if we're using this kind of way of defining event-driven, uh, we have a limitation, uh, which is it's hard to track which is what, which is uh, uh, like which output are dependent on which input. So yeah, this is the, the linking part is, is is the limitation here. That's why uh, 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 the event-driven isn't is will not solve our problem uh, that reactivity or reactive programming does. And yeah, 
let's continue. So now reactive programming, combined feature of solutions we have seen so far. So it's combined all, um, like it's after eliminating the limitation, it, it combined all the solution together where we, we cache a value and we, I don't know if it said here. Yeah, so it's lazy and cached. That's the properties of reactive expressions. But here, let's say, uh, let's see this code. Uh, uh, this reactive valve uh, is, yeah, 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 you're creating a value that's reactive. And if you, get, you want to get the value, you use this, uh, we call this just as it is a function. And if you want to set it, uh, uh, we, we just call it with a value. And we, after we get it again, it will change. Um, yeah, so to use the reactive value, now it's created dependencies. So if you want to use a reactive as a function now, we could make it dependent on the reactive value. So every time the reactive value changes, it will call reactive or tempf based on the changes in tempc. So tempc now is a reactive value. Every change happening to it, either with uh, a slider input, or either with uh, a programming, uh, pro programmable way of changing it, every time it change, it will effectively or progressively changes uh, the tempf or execute make make tempf executes. So we create a lineage graph uh, about uh, with tempc or and tempf. Um, so yeah, uh, when we call tempf now, uh, it it will be 64, 68. Now if tempc changes, call tempf again, we see it, it's changed to 14. Um, so yeah, and, uh, and only compute when needed. This is computed when, if, when, when out, when, when reactive value only changes. This will not compute if, uh, if other values changes, if uh, if you have other other variables changes, uh, if you have any other input other than TMC, for example, like uh, a value which is um, like is an S value, for example, it would if it, if it changed, it will not like uh, re-execute uh, the whole thing again. So just you create that small dependency or small lineage graph between the uh, TMC and TMF. And yeah, this is how reactive programming work. It's in simple terms, of course. Uh, now that we, behind the scene, we'll talk about more about behind the scene, what is happening behind the scene uh, for Shiny, uh, in Shiny itself, and how this is uh, come up together as as this simple concept, if, if an input change, the output will change accordingly. Uh, so yeah, simple concept, but uh, how is this implemented in Shiny? We'll see that in other chapters. Now, the properties directive, we we'll talk about this, yeah, uh, the properties directive for expressions, it's lazy, so it only does work when it's called. It will not work for um, um, like automatically. No, it will just work when it's need to be uh, to to, complete, to to be computed, so it stay sleep on a sleep mode. I was I was thinking about it like that uh, until it's been called. Now it's waking up and it will work now. And this is our active expression property is a lazy. So uh, and it's cached. It saves the last result, so uh, it doesn't need to recall recalculate every time since it's it just saves the last result. The only change, uh, uh, the only thing with that will be not cached is when um, when uh, one of the part of the input uh, or one of the input is changed. Now, uh, if uh, if there is a dependency, that that will be recalculated all over again. So yeah, two two important properties: lazy and cached. That's the property of reactive expressions. And this is 
uh, will be applied to all the activity reactive functions that we talked about before in chapter um, I think chapter uh, three yeah um, yeah some some history about reactive programming but yeah it's uh, it's it's more about the the, the good to know stuff um, uh, I think Joe Joe Cheng uh, have uh, have get an inspiration from Emperor and Meter. Uh, for for shiny as a shiny framework now. So uh, and it's, those are JavaScript uh, UI uh, frameworks that was popular back then. Uh, now uh, reactivity are implemented behind the scenes some way in some sense in React and Vue and Angular, which is the the the, the most popular uh, front end frameworks. And yeah, it's uh, reactive programming in the, is a general term. Uh, a lot of different implementation can fill that concept. Uh, yeah, so the there is a like it's a very general. So implementation, it uh, you could implement it uh, in a different way. That's why I said uh, React could implement uh, reactive programming in diff different than view, different than Angular. Uh, but the general term is happening when something change over time. Um, it it uh, it changes by uh, automatically some output out there. Um, so yeah, I think this is uh, uh, this is reactivity in simple term, and this is a motivation for why we need reactivity. Um, I hope it, it's a very small chapter, but uh, it will build up for the next three chapter where we will talk more about reactive graphs, reactive building blocks, and other stuff. Um, so does you have any other question, uh, any, uh, any question about reactivity and how we could implement it? Because we'll dive into the implementation, but I, I want to know, uh, does, do you have any incident about that you don't understand, uh, the implementation of reactivity? So, uh, that make you curious how this is happening in R behind the scene? So yeah, if, if you have any other, any question like that, I would be happy to answer. Cool, so yeah. So thanks for, for joining us uh, for, for this small chapter. Um, in the next session, we'll talk about Okay, yeah. Do you have anything to say, Kisu? Okay, no, it's a wonderful time being with you. So we'll awesome. look forward to next time then. Yeah, it will I will try also to um to get some uh pie shiny examples and okay. show other stuff. Yeah, to okay. that, that would be nice. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. So thanks thank for, for joining us. Yeah, thank okay. you for you for joining me. And uh, okay. see you in the next session. Uh, goodbye. Same here. Goodbye. See you later. See you later. Bye.